is Mandira. Welcome to Agla Sem. And today we are going to be studying Class 11, Chapter 5, Sensory, Attentional and Perceptual Processes. Now this chapter is going to deal with uh, how the various receptors in our body capture information from the internal and inter external and internal world. So how we are able to uh, see, how we are able to hear, how we are able to interpret information that's coming to us. So uh, just to give you a bit of a summary, we will be studying the structure and function of the eye, the ear and uh, some of the interesting processes associated with vision and audition. Audition means, uh, so now you know, to listen to something. So let's get on with the first, let's get on to this chapter. And I know that this is a bit of a technical chapter, but don't worry because we're going to cover it in the easiest way possible. So let's get on with the first heading, which is knowing the world. So this section of the chapter basically deals with several, several examples given to you about the things around us. I always give this example, I know that, um, okay, so this pen, I can see it is sort of cylindrical in shape. I can see that it is white here and then blue here. It has something written on it. It has a little cap and I can fasten it like this. So all this information that I'm able to see, right, is coming from my sense organ. So in this chapter, the first thing we are going to see is sensation. So because the chapter is called Sensational, Attentional and Perceptual Processes, now you will think that three words are in this sequence. Mein kyun hai? Because 90-80% of the time, all this happens in this sequence only. First, sensation will occur, then basically attention will occur or whatever we attend to will be processed or perceptualized. Okay? So that's why this chapter is called so. So for example, sensation means I have first apni eye, sense organ ke, uh, you know, help say I looked at this pen, I know the shape, I know the size, right? I paid attention to this pen. Although there are many things in my room, there's my book, there's my table, there's my chair, but the only thing I am paying attention to is this pen, right? And then I am perceiving, I am interpreting what the meaning of this pen is, what the meaning of the shape is, what is a cylindrical shape, and all these, you know, things that I am, all this information that I'm deriving from the pen is part of the perceptual processes. So that's why this chapter is called Sensory, Attentional and Perceptual Processes. Whenever we do anything in daily life, we do all the three processes very naturally. But now that you will read them in this chapter, you will recognize that, oh, okay, this is actually what, this is the science behind what we are doing. So um, let's get on with our first important uh, part of the chapter, which is about sense modalities. So what is sensation? Sensation refers to immediate basic experiences of stimulus, attributes such as hard, warm, loud, blue, which is the result from appropriate stimulation from a sensory organ. As you know, we have five plus two, seven sense organs, um, and they provide us with first-hand information. Is that what we are seeing eyes se dekh rahe hai, that is always very direct, um, direct uh, you know, uh, way of in, uh, interacting with something or looking at something. So, for example, um, if uh, a more indirect way of processing would be what our brain does. So, for example, our eyes look at this pen or look at any kind of object and they send all that information to our brain to interpret. The brain interprets it and sends it back to our modalities, right? So, uh, the brain that is, you know, doing all, all sorts of its job is mo doing more of an indirect job. But eyes or ears, they are doing a very primary kind of task, a very first-hand kind of task. So, the first thing that's happening is that you are looking at them with the eye. Interpretation will happen later on. So it is a very first-hand kind of process, okay? So let's move on to the first heading, which is functional limitations of sense organs. It's made, there is this one important definition that has been discussed. It's uh, basically that of psychophysics. And uh, it's basically the relationship between stimuli, sensation, they evoke, and that, ha that has been studied in the discipline called psychophysics. Now, psycho means psychology as we are studying from the past four or five chapters. And physics, as you all know, it is um, studying the natural you know, aspects, the physical aspects of something. So, in when we merge karte hai, we come up with psychophysics. Now, you must be wondering that <laughs> why will I want to study physics when I'm studying psychology, right? But what eye ki processes and what ear ki processes are, all those involve uh, physics, all those involve a lot of uh, physical properties, a lot of, uh, you know, science that's going on behind what's uh, happening, how we are perceiving things. That's why it is very important to integrate these two disciplines. 
Now, the first topic that they discuss over here in this section is uh, the absolute threshold. What is an absolute threshold? Now, um, let me give you a bit of a context before I start getting in, into the definition. So, for example, I am trying to hear something. Aap isko isi example se yaad rakna because vision se threshold thoda sa mushkil ho jata hai. Audition se it's a bit easier. So, for example, you're trying to hear the uh, what, what I'm speaking in this video. Okay. So, what you'll do is, agar aapne bahut kam awaaz kar rakhi hai, one or two pe awaaz kar rakhi hai, you'll probably not be able to hear it as clearly. Right. So, for anything to be heard clearly, right, it has to cross a certain threshold. Threshold means minimum limit. Minimum limit usko cross karna padega in order to become audible. Agar aap zero pe sound kar doge, to aapko nahi sunai dega. One pe karoge, thodi si sunai degi. Then you do it on four or five, you are able to hear it clearly, right? So, this minimum limit that one thing needs to cross, matlab aap zero se jab one pe aate ho, to thoda thoda sunai dena start ho jata hai na? So, that one pe jo aya, that is the minimum cutoff for hearing a sound. Thik hai? So, here it is given that the minimum value of stimulus required to activate a given sensory system is called absolute threshold or absolute alignment. So, matlab minimum level of vibrations in the environment for you to be heard as a sound, to qualify as a sound, is called the absolute threshold. Okay? Similarly, it's my sari sense uh, sensory systems ka example diya hai. So it's not just for audition. Obviously, uh, you can hear it vision may also. There needs to be a minimum level of brightness of something, jisse ki aapko visible ho, right? Uh, I mean, you can try this experiment. Aap kabhi, you take your phone and uh, go out in the sun and bring it down to the minimum brightness. You will not be able to see anything on the screen. So there is a minimum level of brightness that you need to, you know, ye ek, ek, ek example ho jayega, vision ka, just may aapko ek minimum level of brightness chahiye to look at the phone to see what kind of, you know, things are happening inside the phone. That would be the absolute threshold. Okay. So, um, absolute threshold is not a fixed point. Instead, it varies considerably across individuals and situations. For example, um, there is a very good example of uh, sugar and water, uh, in water. So, uh, chai mein aap imagine kar lije that, you know, some people um, have their tea sugarless, some of them put sugar in it. So, maybe half teaspoon of sugar is something that I am able to recognize as sugar, right? Ye meetha hai. But, some other person might be requiring more than half teaspoon, maybe they are requiring one teaspoon, one and a half teaspoon. Thikhe? So, sabka apna apna ek individual uh, threshold hota hai. It is not an absolute term. But now the question arises ki agar sabka apna apna hi hota hai, then what is the, how will you standardize it? So, there is an excellent way given here to standardize it. 50% um, of the occasions, just may uh, basically something is being detected as sweet or some stimuli is being, is being detected, that will be uh, the universally agreed upon, <laughs> um, you know, threshold of uh, sweet or any kind of modality. For example, if, uh, if more than 50% of people can hear the sound on one, right, ki kuch kuch video ki sound hai, then that will be the absolute threshold. If 50% are able to hear minimum on two, then two will be the absolute threshold of the sound. Okay. So, now uh, we next concept hai, difference threshold. Difference threshold is not much difference. It is just that you can understand that we have a sound on a sound, right? For, uh, for the sound to go, how much the sound has to travel, basically how much the sound has to increase from 2 to whatever number, 2 to 3, let's say, so that you can find out that distinctly that that sound is less and sound is less. Right? So, again, the example is given that if half teaspoon you have added, uh, sugar you have added. So, how much more sugar do you need to add in order to detect that, oh, now there is more sugar. Ye zyada meetha hai pehle se. That will, that will be called the difference threshold or difference uh, line. So, uh, as we were talking about auditory and visual examples, the first, uh, you know, uh, sort of process, sensory process that they have taken up in this uh, chapter is the visual sensation one. So, let's start with uh, what visual sensation is. Visual sensation, visual means anything you can see. So, Anything that will be covered relating to eye, relating to uh, your, you know, ability to see, that will always be called visual. So, let's come to the human eye and the parts of human eye. Now, these are very important because usually uh, they will come as one or two marker questions and uh, they will be like, okay, so dash <laughs> uh, is the, you know, uh, camera of the eye or something like that. So, always remember any, any part of the eye using its function. 
सो so, आपको डेफिनेशन तो इसमें है ही नहीं याद करने की जरूरत भी नहीं है बट वॉट दैट पर्टिक्यूलर पार्ट ऑफ द आई डज यू ऑलवेज हैव टू रिमेम्बर इट सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड कॉर्निया सबसे पहले आता है इट इज एंटाफ स्क्लेरा दैट सराउंड द रेस्ट ऑफ दिस इट्स Is, it's not, it's, 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 is not a eye, but it does surround the eye. It protects the eye and maintains its shape. That's the function. तो इससे हम कॉर्निया स्क्लेरा को याद कर सकते हैं The middle layer is called choroid, which is richly supplied with blood vessels. Inner layer is called retina. This is the most important. Um, it contains photoreceptors, that, that is rods and cones, uh, and an elaborate network of interconnecting neurons. This question often comes up that which part of the eye contains the maximum number of photoreceptors that will be retina okay then comes the lens that basically divides the eye into two unequal chambers name is basically they are called aqueous chamber and vitreous chamber because aqueous chamber is called aqueous chamber because it is filled with aqueous liquid and vitreous chamber because it is filled with a jelly like protein which is vitreous humor humor matlab liquid okay so these fluids are holding uh, the lens at its appropriate place in proper shape kyunki unke andar fluids hote hain that is why the, the eye is not revolving around right it is just in a fixed position and it can be moved to a certain direction but aisa nahi hai ki eye is wobbling around theek hai that is their job and uh, then comes the ciliary muscles ciliary muscles wo wali muscles hoti hain those control uh, the shape of the eye they change the shape of the eye and if you want to look uh, at a distance so they will um, you know try to focus on the object on the object i mean they sorry they will try to relax if you are sort of reading something they will try to focus तो ये वाली जो मसल्स हैं हमारी सिलियरी मसल्स जो हमारी आई से रिलेटेड उसकी शेप को चेंज करती हैं दोज आर कॉल्ड सिलियरी मसल्स सो दे फ्लैटन द लेंस इफ यू हैव टू लुक एट अ डिस्टेंट ऑब्जेक्ट डिस्टेंस ऑन दूर का ऑब्जेक्ट एंड दे थिक इन इट टू फोकस ऑन नियर ऑब्जेक्ट्स ऐसे थिक करती है और फ्लैटन योर योर आई विल ऑलवेज लाइक इंटरनल पार्ट ऑफ योर आईज विल ऑलवेज बी रिलैक्स इफ यू ट्राइंग टू लुक एट समथिंग एट अ डिस्टेंस ओके सो लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट पार्ट विच इज आईरिस Iris serves the purpose. Um, what purpose does it serve? It serves. It controls the amount of light entering the eye. ये वाला क्वेश्चन भी बहुत आता है. Which part of the eye controls the amount of light? It is not retina. It is iris, and it is a disc-like colored membrane lying between cornea and the lens. Retina is the innermost layer of the eye, made up of five uh, types of photoreceptive cells. Among which are rods and cones. Rods and cones आपने पढ़े होंगे. Rods are the receptors of night vision जो होते हैं. on they operate at very low intensity light and colorless vision they are mostly mostly responsible for or cones wo hote hain jo chromatic vision matlab colored vision ke liye responsible hote hain okay so uh, the region of the retina surrounding the fovea which is small circular size uh, basically size of the pea small circular region hota hai it is called the yellow spot this is not that important um Besides photoreceptors, retina also contains a bundle of axons. Axons, remember from the pre previous chapter, biological basis of behavior, chapter number three, we did it there. Um, and basically, they form the optic nerve. Optic nerve is very important because it sends all the information that is you know collected from the eye to the brain. So it's very important that the nerve doesn't get damaged in any kind of condition. Now let's come to the working of the eye. <laughs> so retina is divided into two parts. That is the nasal half and the temporal half. Internal half जो होता है eye का, that uh, taking the you know center of fovea as a midpoint. अगर आप ले लो, I think uh, you'll more likely you're more likely to understand this if you look at this picture. So I'm referring to the picture on page number eighty nine. So you can open that and then hopefully uh, your understanding will be much better. so basically uh, right uh, light from the right visual field stimulates the left half of the eye so usually aapne padha hi hoga ki koi bhi cheez agar right se hum karte hain that usually controls the left part of the body so bhi aisa hi hai and uh, an inverted image of the object is formed by the retina so uh, you must have read about lenses in, uh, in class 10 usme physics mein i think pura chapter tha about uh, what kind of images what kind of lenses form so obviously hamari eye is a type of lens has has the kind of lens that forms an inverted image उल्टी इमेज फॉर्म होती है सो दैट इमेज इज देन सेंट टू द ब्रेन एंड द ब्रेन इनवर्ट्स इट बेसिकली ब्रिंग्स इट बैक टू नॉर्मल एंड सेंड्स इट बैक टू यू नो देन इट इज प्रोसेस सो वी प्रोसेस एवरीथिंग एज अपराइट नॉट इनवर्टेड राइट सो देन देर इज दिस एरिया वेर विजुअल सेंसिटिविटी इज एब्सोल्युटली एब्सेंट इट इज कॉल्ड द ब्लाइंड स्पॉट सो देर इज एग्जांपल्स ऑफ दिस डिस्कस especially when it comes to road accidents that you know uh, a certain biker was coming and it it fell on the rider's blind spot isliye accident ho gaya so next topic we come to is adaptation 
इसमें दो टाइप के अडेप्टेशन हमारी डिस्कस हुई है द फर्स्ट वन इज लाइट अडेप्टेशन एंड द सेकंड वन इज डार्क अडेप्टेशन इट्स वेरी इजी दिस कॉन्सेप्ट लाइट अडेप्टेशन रेफर्स टू द प्रोसेस ऑफ एडजस्टिंग to bright light after exposure to dim light so you know it's like very nice weather now it's sunny outside sometimes so as i uh, you can try it out that you know just uh, turn off all the lights in your room and then suddenly get out in the sunny jo aapka ek bilkul sunny aapka bahar chal raha hai you know sunny day you will find that you know it will take a certain time for you to adjust you know the immense amount of light that is entering your eye this also happens when we go to the cinema hall so cinema hall say when you get out and you know you come in the open then you realize that oh actually we were sitting in the dark for too long and now uh, we are kind of adapting to the amount of light that's coming into our eye okay this process will nearly take a minute or two so obviously if you go out ek do minute mein you will start feeling comfortable your eye will adjust to the new lighting conditions however in dark adaptation what happens it is a similar process refers to the process of adjusting to dimly illuminated environment after exposure to bright light ab you have sitten in the sun for about 30 minutes let's say and then you are coming back okay and then when you come back to a dimly lit room or you know if all the lights are off then you will take minimum i think 30 minutes yeah or an hour yeah to adjust to the new dimly lit settings now iska reason kya hai it the reason is because uh, jo hamara द रॉड्स जो हमारे रॉड्स में एक केमिकल होता है उसका नाम होता है रोडॉप्सिन इट्स ऑल्सो कॉल्ड विजुअल पर्पल नाउ बाय द एक्शन ऑफ लाइट द मॉलिक्यूल्स ऑफ दिस केमिकल सब्सटेंस गेट ब्लीच और ब्रोकन डाउन ओके सो इसके अंदर तो लाइट अडेप्टेशन विल टेक प्लेस बट वेन यू आर कमिंग टू अ डार्क रूम दिस इज अचीव बाय द रिमूवल ऑफ लाइट अलाउिंग फॉर रिस्टोरेटिव प्रोसेस टू रीजेनरेट द पिगमेंट इन रॉड्स अब अगर आप एक केमिकल विच इज रोडॉक्सिन एक पिगमेंट को रीजेनरेट कर रहे हो इन टू रॉड्स लाइक दैट दैट रीजेनरेशन ऑफ केमिकल विल टेक अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम सो दैट्स वाई डार्क एडेप्टेशन टेक्स मोर टाइम देन लाइट एडेप्टेशन आई थिंक दिस इज वन ऑफ दो क्वेश्चन दैट शोज अप इन दी एग्जाम एंड पेज नंबर नाइनटी सेकेंड पैराग्राफ इज अ वेरी गुड आंसर टू दिस dark adaptation is achieved by the removal of light there thereby allowing restorative processes to regenerate the pigment in the rods with the help of vitamin a so this regeneration of rhodopsin is a time consuming process which is why it is a time consuming process to adapt to the dark surroundings around you okay so this is a very good answer for this question um that's why you know uh, isme likha hai that uh, rods mein jo jab rhodopsin ka produce, production ho raha hota hai jab uska um, it is uh, regenerating uske liye vitamin a is very important so that's why everyone is telling you to you know eat carrots and everything uh, good that contains vitamin a for this part of the uh, you know this health of the eye <laughs> so that you can easily adapt to dark situations of course rods do other things too but this is one of those things okay now let's come to color vision color vision as you know it is uh, mostly done by jo hamara cones wala part hai that will do the color vision chromatic vision ka uh, it will be responsible so the visible spectrum range uh, of energy is 380 to 700 nanometer which is our photoreceptors can detect so uh, you must have read about the web cure uh, jo hamara ek violet indigo blue green yellow orange red and you know the rainbow colors jo hai hamari those are the colors that is those those are the ranges of colors that are visible through the normal human eye okay now every color has three kind of properties the first one is hue so hue is the name of the color okay it is the chromatic name of a pro- property of a chromatic color so if you are saying that this is blue then it is the the hue of this is blue the hue of this is white okay so name of the color jo hai that is hue this will also show up in a lot of fill in the blanks that dash is the name of the color so you can write hue there saturation kya hota hai it is a psychological attribute that refers to the amount of hue or, 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 or yeah of a surface or an or an object so it means ki ye jo blue hai ye kitna blue hai <laughs> okay so um let's let me explain one more concept then i'll uh, explain a good example jisse ki aap ye you can understand all this very easily brightness is the perceived intensity of light it varies across chromatic and achromatic colors so white and black represent the top and bottom of the brightness dimension so black is the least uh, bright and white is the brightest so what you can do is if you have a phone on your hands which you probably do because you're watching this video Uh, you click a picture of yourself and try to edit it. Okay, so when you go to any kind of editor, it will ask you all these questions: that saturation come करना है, ज़्यादा करना है, brightness come करनी है, ज़्यादा करनी है. All this is very easily understandable through that concept. 
तो जैसे सैचुरेशन अगर आप किसी पिक्चर की बढ़ाओगे सो वॉट विल हैपन इज इट विल इट विल स्टार्ट टू अपियर वेरी वेरी क्रोमेटिक मतलब बहुत इंटेंस कलर्स उसमें आपको लगने लग जाएंगे जैसे कि ब्लू बहुत ही ब्लू लगेगा रेड बहुत ही रेड लगेगा सो दैट काइंड ऑफ इंटेंसिटी विल इंक्रीज अगर आप ब्राइटनेस इंक्रीज करोगे द अमाउंट ऑफ लाइट दैट इज यू नो देर ऑन द वीडियो दैट विल इंक्रीज और अगर आप डिक्रीज करोगे देन यूल स्टार्ट टू द वीडियो विल स्टार्ट टू अपियर बिट डार्क सो दीज कैन बी अंडरस्टूड फ्रॉम एडिटिंग वन पिक्चर वीडियो एंड होपफुली यू विल बी गुड टू गो सो द नेक्स्ट वन वेल टू डू इज कलर मिक्स सो बेसिकली आपको उसमें बस यही जानने की जरूरत है दैट देर आर थ्री प्राइमरी कलर्स एंड दोज प्राइमरी कलर्स आर रेड ब्लू एंड ग्रीन ओके सो दीज आर द थ्री प्राइमरी कलर्स एंड दीज कलर्स मिक्स टू फॉर्म अदर कलर्स दैट वी आर एबल टू सी थ्रू द नॉर्मल ह्यूमन विजन ओके so the next concept we are going to do here is that of the after images ye bahut hi it is very easily confused on but don't worry it's a very easy concept so let's read the definition the uh, basically the effect of visual stimulus persists for some time matlab it sustains for some time even after the removal of that stimulus from the visual field right this effect is called this is uh, this this effect is called after image so after images are positive or negative so positive after image kaun se they resemble the original stimulus in terms of hue saturation and brightness that we read earlier they usually occur after a brief intense stimulation of dark adapted eyes so basically aap when you are focusing you are looking at any kind of uh, you know visual stimulus visual stimulus matlab any kind of object around you for a very very long time okay and then you start to look away there will be an image that is basically in in your head an image so basically that is staying after you have even stopped looking at that object that image is called the uh, after image and positive will the, uh, the uh, there are two types obviously positive and negative the positive one will uh, have the same sort of chromatic properties matlab jo uske hue saturation aur brightness hai wo pehle wale jaise hi aapki jo after image hai us uski original object jaise hi honge right negative appear in complementary colors for example um if you look at an object uh, that is blue or if you look at the color blue the negative after image will appear in yellow good example because i happen to have a blue pen so if you keep looking at this for a very long time and then look away you're most likely to see a um a yellow after image okay so these are the what is the difference between positive and negative that positive will match jo aapne object dekha bilkul waise hi after image dikhegi negative mein uski complementary color ki after image dikhegi we know that the complementary of blue is yellow that's why we are seeing yellow images okay so uh, here uh, we kind of finished the uh, part on visual sensation and now we are entering the part on auditory sensation which is to do with hearing and you know the sections of the ear and all that so let's straight up jump to the human ear okay it is divided into three parts external mid and inner ear okay external ear, inner uh, ear consists of two main structures called the pinea or and the auditory meatus the pinea is a cartilaginous funnel shaped structure that collects sound waves from the surroundings and meatus is a canal protected by hair and wax that contains sound waves from the pinea so again i i will recommend you to look at this uh, picture which is on page number 92 to understand this uh, you know little structures so uh, isme bhi again please remember these structures using the functions of their structures okay if they are assessed in your exam the middle layer pe aa jate hain middle layer uh, starts with a uh, tympanum which is a thin membrane highly sensitive to sound vibrations this is followed by the tympanic cavity cavity means hole it is connected to the pharynx pharynx here um with the help of eustachian tube which maintains the air pressure in the tympanic cavity so this is these are the main parts of the middle ear as make hammer bhi hota hai there is this incus or anvil stapes stirrup jo hota hai then there is the inner ear and it is it contains the membranous labyrinth which is encapsulated in a bony shell called bony labyrinth okay so um then there is a, a lymph uh, like fluid between the space of bony labyrinth and membranous liquid this is called the perilymph let me just show you to you uh, in this picture if it is mentioned don't worry i will provide a picture and it will show up on the box where you can clearly see this part of the ear so that you don't get confused okay so um 
द बोनी लेबरिंथ हैज थ्री सेमी सेमी सर्क्यूलर कैनाल्स जो कि राइट एंगल्स पे होते हैं कॉल द वेस्टिब्यूल राइट एंड द कॉइल स्ट्रक्चर कॉल कॉकलिया सो इफ आई थिंक इफ एनी ऑफ यू हैज रेड देन अगर आप पीपल हु आर हु आर डेफ हु कांट हियर उनके लिए जो इम्प्लांट्स होते हैं दिस आर ऑलवेज कॉकलियर इम्प्लांट्स सो दिस इज द प्लेस वेर एन इम्प्लांट विल बी प्लेस्ड इफ यू आर यू नो इफ यू कांट हियर इनफ और इफ यू आर जस्ट अवॉइड ऑफ हियरिंग so uh, then there is the scala media which is uh, the membrane is uh, basically inside uh, the cochlea and the basilar membrane and the organ of corti okay which has got fine hairs arranged in a series uh, that kind of structure so this is the main organ of hearing so again this uh, function this question can show up that what is the main organ for hearing and that will be your answer so uh, the next uh, sub topic is working of the ear technically speaking uh, most of the time human ear <laughs> the structures relating to human ear will not show up in the exam and if they do then uh, and if you have any additional questions feel free to leave them in the box and i will explain the further you know detailed uh, kind of uh, view of the human ear abhi biology mein i don't want to get into that to confuse you so i'm restricting myself to ncert definitions only okay in short agar hum working of the ear ko uh, padhe then that will be पिनिया इज कलेक्टिंग द साउंड वाइब्रेशन एक्सटर्नल पार्ट में है तो ऑब्वियसली इट विल बी कलेक्टिंग द फर्स्ट जो हमारा साउंड वाइब्रेशन आएगा ओके देन टिम्पेनिकेविटी वाइब्रेशन आर ट्रांसफर टू थ्री ऑसिकल्स विच इंक्रीज द स्ट्रेंथ एंड ट्रांसमिट दम टू द इनर इयर सो इनर इनर इयर इज बेसिकली वेर द कॉकलिया इज राइट सो दिस विल रिसीव द साउंड वेव एंड थ्रू वाइब्रेशन वेन द वाइब्रेशन इज सेट इन टू मोशन देन ऑर्गन ऑफ कॉटाई विल कम इन टू प्लेस विच इज द मेन ऑर्गन फॉर हियरिंग then the impulses are sent to the auditory nerve and which it emerges as the base of the cochlea and reaches the auditory cortex where the impulse is interpreted similarly jaise ki i may you know you will see and then uh, your optic nerve will carry the information to the brain similar thing happens in the ear as well okay okay now we come to the important part of auditory which is sound as a stimulus जैसे कि हमने ह्यू ब्राइटनेस एंड सैचुरेशन उनकी प्रॉपर्टीज पढ़ी थी वैसे अब हम कुछ कुछ प्रॉपर्टीज साउंड की भी पढ़ेंगे ओके सो द फर्स्ट वन वी आर गोइंग टू रीड इज एम्पलीट्यूड एम्पलीट्यूड आपने पढ़ा होगा शायद टेंथ में इट इज द लॉन्गेस्ट डिस्टेंस पेंडिलम में मे बी यू माइट हैव रेड एम्पलीट्यूड सो ये इट इज वेरी वेरी सिमिलर टू दैट बिकॉज जस्ट लाइक अ पेंडुलम जो वो मैकेनिज्म चल रहा था बिल्कुल यहां पर वही चल रहा है बिकॉज साउंड ऑलवेज टेक्स प्लेस थ्रू वाइब्रेशन ओके so amplitude is a general measure of stimulus magnitude it is the amount of change in pressure that is extent of displacement of molecules from the position of rest matlab agar uh, for example maine clap kiya okay so i have to what is the amplitude ye ek amplitude hai right ye ek amplitude hai kitna displacement molecules ka hua and that will obviously uh, uh, modify the intensity of uh, the sound that you're hearing amount of sound that you're hearing also okay wavelength kya hota hai distance between two क्रेस्ट साउंड वेव्स ये देखो ये वेव इज ऑलवेज फॉर्म लाइक दिस सो द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन टू क्रेस्ट इज कॉल्ड द वेव लेंथ सो एज यू हैव रेड की आई थिंक विजन में भी वी हैव रेड दैट रेड की वेव लेंथ कितनी है ब्लू की एज अ कलर वेव लेंथ कितनी है उतनी ही वैसे ही सिमिलर कॉन्सेप्ट इज अप्लाइड टू वेन वी आर हियरिंग ओके साउंड वेव्स जो आप सुनते हो गए द मेजर ऑफ द यूनिट ऑफ मेजरमेंट ऑफ दिस इज हर्ट्स so uh, when the wavelength increases the frequency decreases and when the wavelength decreases the frequency increases we have a inversely proportional relationship okay uh, you can remember this uh, because uh, sometimes it will come in the fill in the blanks ki when the wavelength increases frequency is dash and so on okay so isko yaad rakh lijiyega then there is the loudness loudness is determined by the amplitude maine bola tha na ki first i clap like this and then i clap like this so you know that there is a difference in the sound because there is a difference in the amplitude matlab itna maine kiya to mujhe kam molecules ko disturb karna pada but itne mein bahut molecules disturb hue you can hear the difference also i hope you can then comes pitch pitch refers to highness or lowness so um agar main is pitch pe bol rahi hu that is the low pitch if i'm speaking at this pitch then this is the high pitch <laughs> sound like a looney tunes character but that's what pitch is so what kind of you know uh which uh, highness or lowness at you are speaking at i hope you understand this because i find it really funny uh timbre refers to the nature or quality of sound for example uh, hopefully i my voice doesn't sound as bad as a car engine or a broken car so that is the quality um, of the 
voice that you are listening to. Here we complete almost half of the chapter which is to do with um, audition and visual experiences and now we will start the attentional processes. So let's get on with the part two of the chapter, the second half that deals with attention and perception. So let's start off with attentional processes. First coming the definition, the process through which certain stimuli are selected from a group of others is generally referred to as attention. So you might have heard a lot of teachers, you know, when you are just, you know, zoning out <laughs> of some somewhere, they, they, they'll come to you and say, pay attention. Why are you not paying attention? So that's exactly what attention means. That means Hamare Aspas, there are a lot of, lot of changes, a lot of stimuli going on, but we want to be able to attend to something. That means we are uh, sort of, you know, selecting some of the stimuli and not focusing on the others. So, for example, uh, maybe, you know, your sibling is sitting next to you and he is playing his own game or something like that. Or uh, just, you know, your mom is cooking, your father is working, anything might be happening around you. But you are choosing to focus on this video right now, right? So that will be, you are paying attention to this video. That is what attention is. It is different from alertness because that is the readiness to deal with the stimuli that appear before him or her. So, for example, um, alertness uh, basically will be... Um, just say Aapik race may you can look at that uh, you know they will always be yes alert or be alert uh, before you start the race that means be in position you should be ready to start running that would be an example of alertness not attention okay concentration refers to focusing uh, your awareness on certain specific objects excluding others for the moment so um, what is the difference between attention and concentration that in concentration everything else is completely uh, you know taken off you will only focus on this and this thing. Attention may, although you are paying attention to some, something, but you will still be, you know, uh, wary of what's going on around you. So, <laughs> it is uh, concentration may, yehi far, okay? attention and concentration may. That uh, one may you are really excluding all the other stimuli, one may you are just focusing on one thing, but not really excluding the others. Okay? So, attention uh, has been discussed a lot and uh, here it is mentioned that it is of two types. Uh, selective and sustained. So selective attention kya hoti? We will deal with and divided attention also it is given. Divided attention as I said ki you know you might be sitting in class and or, or you might be watching this video but beach mein if you are using another phone you might be watching this on a laptop and you are you know uh, texting somebody then that is divided attention because your attention is not fully on the texting nor on my video. So that is divided attention. The first thing we are going to discuss in uh, detail under this heading is that of selective attention. So selective attention kya hoti hai? exactly jo maine attention aapko bataya abhi. That uh, it's concerned with the selection of a limited number of stimuli or objects from a large number of stimuli. So you are selecting certain kind of objects. Ki, as I said, ki aapke mein bahut kuch ho ra hoga. And uh, in the world also lots of things are happening. But you are selecting to attend this, uh, to watch this video. That is select, you are giving me your selected attention. Okay. So there are uh, a lot of factors that affect selective attention. Those can be internal and those can be external. External can uh, basically be related to the size, intensity, motion of the stimuli, matlab ki, uh, what is the quality of this video, for example. That is externally dependent. Then how I'm moving my hands, <laughs> motion, whatever is happening. So all these are kind of external uh, you know, factors that might uh, capture your attention. Agar if I keep doing this, then your attention keeps getting diverted, right? So <laughs> that's why I'm not doing it. So these are, this is an example of one of the external factors that might cause your attention to uh, go here and there. Then there is internal factors. Motivational factors are the most important. Uh, basically, whether you want to do something or not, whether you want to watch this video or not. So whether you're motivated enough to watch this video, that would be the motivation factor. The cognitive factor will be interest, um, attitude and preparatory set. How interested you are in this chapter. You might think that this is very boring. So you, you might not be paying a lot of attention. It's a lot of that you know tuition maybe you might have noticed. There is a uh, you know chapter that's going on. Yeah, a topic is a lot of boring. Lagta hai, then you will probably zone out and start thinking about something else. Okay. So now we come to the theories of selective attention. The first one we are going to do is filter theory. Uh, again there are the ek cheez ke liye bahut sare words use ki hume. Don't get too stressed. Uh, basically, this uh, is creating, uh, this uh, theory assumes that you are creating a bottleneck kind of situation. Bottleneck, mother, if you've seen a bottle, basically there's lots of water in here and then there becomes a, a, a thinner zone, right? 
जहां पर देर इज जिससे कि यू कैन पोर वॉटर आउट इफ दैट काइंड ऑफ बॉटल यू हैव सीन सो बॉटल नेक सिचुएशन मतलब देर इज अ पूल ऑफ देर इज अ लॉट ऑफ स्टिमिला दैट्स हैपनिंग अराउंड यू एंड यू चूज टू फोकस योर अटेंशन ऑन ओनली अ नैरो एरे ऑफ स्टिमिला दैट इज फिल्टरिंग इट आउट ठीक है इतने बड़े पूल में से आपने फिल्टर करके एक सर्टन सेट ऑफ स्टिमिला निकाल लिया वेर यू आर पेइंग अटेंशन द फिल्टर एंड द रेस्ट ऑफ इट इज यू नो सॉर्ट ऑफ इग्नोर्ड काइंड ऑफ थिंग या रेस्ट ऑफ इट इज नॉट अटेंडेड टू इसमें यही लिखा है कि आप उस पर यू विल पे अटेंशन ऑन सर्टन थिंग्स एंड नॉट पे अटेंशन ऑन दी अदर वन As opposed to this filter attenuation theory, this also comes up a lot. What is the difference between filter and filter attenuation theory? Um, in this, it is proposed by Treisman. Um, basically, there is a little bit of modification to the previous theory. They say that whatever you are, you know, whatever that bottleneck is, जो एक certain thin area of stimuli that you are focusing on is basically more in strength. ऐसा नहीं है कि you are not focusing on anything else. Yeah, that is excluded. But You that the attention on that becomes weaker. There is a strong attention on the smaller your selected stimuli and weaker attention on the rest of it. Attenuation मतलब weaken करना किसी चीज को मतलब बाकी के जो भी objects हैं उन पर attention weak हो जाती है और जो आपका selected object है उस पर attention ज्यादा है That is filter attenuation theory. The final one is multi-mode theory, which was developed by Hines and Johnston. This theory believes that attention is a flexible system. That allows selection of a stimulus over three stages. So, इसमें तीन stages हैं. First is the sensory representation. Again, आपने देखा कि एक pen है. For example, that is an example of a sensory stimulation. Um, then there, uh, then the uh, at stage two semantic representation. कि ये अच्छा मैंने ये तो देखा लेकिन इसका नाम क्या है? इसका नाम है pen. Okay? इसको pen कहते हैं. आप uh, and the third one is actually semantic. Semantic मतलब what is the meaning? So, stage three uh, sensory and semantic representation enter the consciousness. what can i do with this pen and what is the importance of this pen if a philosopher is looking at this pen and writing an essay on the importance of a pen then that kind of thing theek hai so um aap isko is example se bhi pad sakte hain that if you are introducing a baby to a new object first of all the baby will look at it second they will ask the name ki iska kya naam hai third they will try to see okay what does this mean how can i use this they will try to integrate both those things okay the next topic is that of select uh, sustained attention sustained attention matlab Your attention, आपने you have selected the object that you have to attend to, but now you really want to maintain your attention on it. You want to keep focusing on it. That is called sustained attention. A very good example. It's also called vigilance. A very good example here is given about air traffic control. People who are, uh, you know, operating, um, जो airplanes को signals दे रहे हैं या देख रहे हैं कि एरोनोटिक बेस में कितने प्लेन आ रहे हैं कितने नहीं आ रहे दोज हैव टू हैव सस्टेन अटेंशन बिकॉज एक भी चीज इधर से उधर हुई देन दैट कैन बी फेटल नाउ वी आर डूइंग फैक्टर्स इफेक्टिंग सस्टेन अटेंशन सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल सेंसरी मोडालिटी फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू आर हियरिंग समथिंग इट इज इजियर टू अटेंड टू देन इफ यू आर वॉचिंग समथिंग अगर आप किसी चीज को बहुत ध्यान से देखने की कोशिश कर रहे हो दैट वुड बी मोर डिफिकल्ट देन हियरिंग देन क्लैरिटी हाउ मच क्लैरिटी इज देर इफ अगर मैं ऐसे बात करना स्टार्ट कर दू देन यू विल हैव टू हियर मोर यू नो कि ये क्या बोल रही है मोर यू हैव टू फोकस ऑन इट ओके सो दैट्स एंड सस्टेन अटेंशन विल बी रियली अफेक्टेड बाय दिस टेम्पोरल अनसर्टेंटी इज बेसिकली हाउ एट रेगुलर इंटरवल्स वेदर समथिंग इज कमिंग और नॉट कि वेदर द टेम्पो इज बींग फॉर्म एज आई सेट टेम्पोरल से रेगुलर इंटरवल्स पे समथिंग इज कमिंग और नॉट एंड स्पेशल अनसर्टेंटी इज वेदर Stimuli that stimuli that are appearing on a fixed place are readily attended, whereas those that appear at random locations are weird. So if I start, okay, now I'm sitting here and doing this video, then basically to capture your sustained attention. But if I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, you'll keep getting distracted, and it'll be very difficult to focus on what I'm saying. Okay, so there is also a disorder here in the box. It's given ADHD, which uh, deals with uh, it's called attention deficit hyperactivity, it happens in children as well as adults. so uh, it is a disorder of attention and hyperactivity and you can read it in the box and if you have any additional questions let me know the next main heading we are going to is perception so perception kya hota hai it is the process by which we recognize and interpret or give meaning to the information provided by sense organs so whatever you have attended to you start giving that a meaning now this is where psychology comes कि ओके मे बी नाउ अभी तक यू आर थिंकिंग दैट ऑल दीज आर फिजिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ वॉट एवर इज हैपनिंग बट ऑब्वियसली नॉट उसमें भी साइकोलॉजी है बट परसेप्शन में देर इज अ लॉट ऑफ वर्क ऑफ साइकोलॉजी ओके सो 
इसमें देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ प्रोसेसिंग परसेप्शन के अकॉर्डिंग वन इज टॉप टॉप डाउन एंड दर वन इज बॉटम अप दिस इज वेरी कंफ्यूजिंग सो आई होप आई कैन एक्सप्लेन दिस टू यू विदिपल एग्जाम्पल so the idea uh, that recognition begins from paths which serve as the basis of recognition for the whole is called bottom up processing it means that um aap isko aise samajh lijiye that there is a picture okay and that is a very detailed picture jaise coloring books mein pictures hoti hain you can understand it like that so what you do is start to color all the little bit of the parts aapko ek zoomed in view diya hua hai okay for example mera face hai only my nose is visible right now and you have to color my nose then you will zoom out a little bit then you can uh, you know uh, do, uh, color my eyes then my face and then my lips and so on and when you zoom out in the end you are able to see that oh actually what i was painting was a face okay this is an example of bottom up processing matlab apne first uske individual features dekhne shuru kare in isolation okay this is an eye this is a nose or this is an object this is an object and when you zoom out you find out that oh this is what the entire picture is which is that of a face top down processing it's basically identification of the various components uh basically it begins with the whole so notion that recognize that recognition process begins with the whole that means if you are provided a picture of my face and now you are told to color it so you already know in the first place that it's a face mm-hmm. and now oh this is the nose so now this is the nose of the face this is the eye of the face and everything is in reference to the whole picture which is the face okay that will be example of top down processing so bottom up uh, bottom up approach lays uh, emphasis on the features of a stimuli jaise ki maine aapko bataya ki uh, if nose and eyes and all these are all these things are being talked about then the focus is on them but if you look at top down processing then the focus is on the perceiver jo banda observe kar raha hai right you will immediately recognize ki ye to face hai that's why now again there are important factors uh, which play role a good role in determining what meaning we give to the external world right so some of these factors will be discussed now the first one is motivation so we basically perceive objects in the picture as something that will satisfy our need to jis cheez ki humko zarurat hai jis cheez ko we are you know motivated to find that we are hopefully able to find in whatever is in our environment for example they said that they presented ambiguous pictures matlab doubtful basically unclear pictures uh, objects to a uh, series of objects to a lot of people and because they were really really hungry they thought of them as food <laughs> like i think uh, if you ever ye aapke sath bhi hua hoga that you know you are feeling really hungry so any you know sort of uh, circular zigzag pattern you are seeing you are like oh it's a jalebi hai so that is one example the second is expectations or perceptual sets what you are expecting to see that will obviously determine um what you are seeing so the phenomenon of perceptual familiarization or perceptual generalization reflects a strong tendency to see what you expect when the results do not accurately reflect external reality all this happens when you, you are unclear ki kya ho raha hai theek hai jaise for example you wake up early in the morning and you open the door and every day at 5:30 the milkman arrives so even if it's someone else for one second you will think that it is the milkman <laughs> okay third one is cognitive styles this is again uh, a lot similar to top down and bottom up processing so feel dependent people is me likha hai feel dependent and feel independent so feel dependent people perceive the world in its totality global or holistic manner akin to uh, top down processing and feel independent people perceive external world by breaking it into smaller units analytical or differentiated manner bottom down theek okay? hai top down and bottom up sorry i said it wrong <laughs> top down and bottom up so the first one to feel dependent hai that is more related to top down and um, the independent one is bottom up right so then the last the final one is cultural background and experiences so for example isme ek uh, example of eskimos has been given that they have been found to make fine distinction among a variety of snow that we will be unable to notice so whatever is around you in your culture you will be able to differentiate it more so this is why um, culturally because makeup is more emphasized on women although anyone can wear it uh that's why they are able to recognize the difference between a lot of women will be able to recognize the difference between one shade of pink and another shade of pink or any boy who is fond of makeup any one who is fond of makeup will be able to recognize uh whether you know dark pink hair or light pink hair or you know ombre pink or any kind of uh, those kind of distinctions so um and um, if for example certain people are more exposed to 
footballs let's say then they will be or bats they will be able to recognize oh this bat is actually different from that bat or this football is different from another football any sports person will be able to do that because that is their culture they have been exposed to a lot of footballs and a lot of bats similarly with makeup as well theek okay? hai the next main heading that we come to is principles of perceptual organization the processes of organizing visual field into meaningful holes is called form perception okay meaningful holes mein usko organize karna at the end of the day we know that whatever you are we are doing is uh, not independent it is not ki we are you know such studying it as individual identities uh, entities that will come and form a bigger picture we know that you know both of the processings are taking place but everything is used to form a whole okay form perception ke liye so um just all psychologists believe that the form of an object lies in the whole which is different from the sum of their parts ye humne फर्स्ट चैप्टर में भी किया था दैट मींस कि ऐसा नहीं है कि एज आई टोल्ड यू दैट एग्जांपल कि दिस 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 दैट्स माय वुड इज़ ऑफ़ सो द होल हैज़ टू बी मोर देन द सम ऑफ इट्स पार्ट्स ठीक है सो देन देर इज अ फिगर ग्राउंड सेग्रीगेशन सो वेरी फेमस पिक्चर इन एनसीआर दिस वन इज गिवन हियर एट पेज नाइनटी नाइन यू कैन सी दैट आई इट कैन बी इन द शेप ऑफ यू नो वेसल अ पॉट और टू फीसेस If you see faces, then congratulations, you are a normal human being. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, human beings are more primed to see faces. We are uh, experimentally this has been proved using a lot of you know psychological experiments that we will recognize faces more than we will recognize other objects. So if you are seeing faces here, it is a very typical reaction. If you are seeing a vessel, then okay, great, you're special. <laughs> so um, here we are going to do some six principles, six or seven prin or seven principles of uh, you know perception. that will sort of help us dive into how we make meanings of things around us the first one is the principle of proximity i would very much appreciate if you open your book to page number 100 and see these pictures it will be great so proximity means jo bhi cheeze aas paas hain in space or time you will um, perceive them as belonging together for example dot 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 you will see the whole thing not being individual uh, dots you will see it as a series columns or rows of dots okay the principle of similarity is if something is similar then those are perceived as a group so again the example is given dots and squares and dots and squares ki uh, columns hai so that's how you will look at them theek hai as opposed to you know this is a set of you know um they are very you know they are very similar same dots hai idhar aur udhar so you will see them as a series of dots and a series of uh, squares rather than a weird picture that contains dots and <laughs> squares so continuity is that uh, if uh we tend to perceive objects as belonging together if they appear to be in a continuous pattern again this is given uh that there is a line from a to b and then there is a line from c to d then uh this means that uh, that we will most likely to be re to recognize it as a b and c d rather than mai bolun ki a p and p b aisa nahi hoga we will recognize them as a single line then principle of smallness uh if uh, smaller areas tend to be seen as figures against larger background uh so here it is given that you know there is this wheel you will be most likely to see the black part not the white part because the background is also white okay and jo ek small amount of cheeze hain wo zyada hame as a figure dikhti hain principle of symmetry symmetrical areas tend to be seen as figures against asymmetrical backgrounds right ye to hai so um if these are symmetric figures you can see them against the background of white right principle of surroundedness surroundedness means it is surrounded by others tend to be perceived as figures for example this image that you can look at the five image usme jo ek the word lift is being formed to aisa aap nahi dekhoge ki it is a word lift you will just see the white background against yeah you, you can see the word lift here i'm sorry if i was not able to explain this properly um you can look at the picture and i will put a link to the picture where uh, this will be more clear Final one is the principle of closure. अगर ऐसे ऐसे और ऐसे करके एक लाइन है एंड द ट्राइंगल इज नॉट कनेक्टेड इट हैज गैप्स इन बिटवीन यू आर स्टिल मोस्ट लाइकली टू सी इट एज अ ट्राइंगल द फाइनल टॉपिक होपफुली ऑफ दिस चैप्टर या ओके नो द थर्ड फाइनल टॉपिक इज दैट ऑफ परसेप्शन ऑफ स्पेस डेप्थ एंड डिस्टेंस सो बेसिकली दिस टॉक्स अबाउट डेप्थ परसेप्शन विच इज इंपॉर्टेंट वेन we are driving or we are you know we want to perceive depth in any kind of uh, circumstance 
So there are two types of cues that are being talked about here, binocular and monocular. First, we will talk about monocular cues. Monocular cues are uh, basically used, uh, they, they can be viewed with only one eye. So, if you eye close karke bhi is ko dekho ge, you will be able to see it. So, uh, in a lot of uh, you know places, artists use monocular cues to give us a sort of a measure of distance. A lot of uh, things can influence or can be used to induce uh, depth using monocular cues. The first one is the relative size. Size of the retinal image allows us to judge the distance based on our past and pre present experiences with similar objects. So we tend to perceive an object as uh, an object farther away when it appears small and closer when it appears bigger. So as you can see, if you a painting, the tree that is bigger than the tree that is drawn on the behind. If you are trying to you know, perceive it as farther away. So distance mein jo objects hai, unko hum small banate hai, right? Because when an object is smaller, we will think that it is at a distance. So interposition overlapping, basically uh, when some portion of the object is covered by another object and the overlap object is considered farther away. Then there is linear perspective, phenomenon by which distant objects appear to be closer than nearer objects. So bahar ke jo ki objects hai, wo aapas mein aapko zada close dekhengi rather than jo aapke ikdam front of your eye. Aerial perspective, um, air contains microscopic particles of dust and moisture that make distance objects look hazy or blurry. This is the one that is with aerial perspective. Light and shade mein kya hai? That uh, light parts, uh, jo object ke highlighted hote hai, well, some parts become darker, right? So highlights and shadows provide us information with an object's distance. So koi cheez agar bohat zada uh, bright hai, then it is more likely to be in, in front. Relative height, larger objects are perceived to be closer to the view and smaller objects are farther away. Jo ibaha hamne wala discuss kiya, basically uska uta hai. Uh, first wale ka. Texture, texture gradient is phenomenon by which visual field having more density is seen as farther away. So, it is a wall given at texture gradient. Ke liye, that these uh, the, bricks are you know, at page number 102, they will appear less in number. If you look at the bricks, you will see that there are bricks. It means the density is very high as it is farther away. Motion parallax, it's any kind, it is simple example is any kind of movie. So, um, if you present one picture after another in the you know fast enough then it can be perceived as a moving picture so that is a video next we come to binocular cues uh, retinal or binocular disparity jo hoti hai hamari, uh, because ek eye se dusre eye ke beech mein gap hota hai, whatever images are produced on both the eyes are a bit different so the farther the image is the less the difference will be that's what essentially this is saying convergence is when uh, we want to see nearby object our eyes converge inwards to bring uh, the image of the fovea or jab dur hota hai toh, that does not happen. So, simple example is if you're trying to view a pen, aise karke aap dekh lije, this is a good example of convergence. A combination jo hai, that is basically, agar aap dur ka object dekh rahe ho, then uh, your thickness uh, of the muscles should be changed and if it, the muscles should be relaxed if you're viewing a farther away object and should be more constricted if you're viewing a closer object. So, power of accommodation aapne padha hoga physics mein. That is the ability to adjust this kind of thing. And if you have uh, nearsightedness or uh, farsightedness, if you have any chashma in any way, then power of accommodation may never be a problem. Hoti hai. Then there is perceptual constancies. Size constancy kya hoti hai? Basically, if um, you know that objects that are farther away will appear to be smaller, but it doesn't happen like that my hand is coming towards me, then the size is so much changing. Because our brain knows, identifies this as a hand. This property is called size constancy and similar thing happens with shape and brightness as well. Again, if you have a plate ka example is given, a dinner plate looks uh, the same shape, uh, whether the image is, uh, it, it casts on the retina is circular or uh, an ellipse, basically a, roughly a short line. So this is also called form consistency. So the size ka constancy maintain hota hai, and then there is called shape ka bhi ek si constancy, our brain maintains it. Similarly with brightness also, our experience of brightness does not change in spite of the changes in the amount of reflected light reaching our eyes. Okay. Finally, we come to some illusions. They can be of two types discussed here. Geometric illusion, matlab, illusions aapne padhe hongi, like usko kush log magic bhi bolte hai, but it is basically something that will escape uh, you know, the usual principles of uh, uh, ear eye perception functioning and they will sort of appear magical. The mal mal eye illusion, malal eye illusion is very famous hai, that uh, there is a line A and B, ek inside arrows and outside arrows, hai, although they are of the same length, you will perceive B, that is the outside arrow wants to be, uh, you know, 
लॉन्गर दे विल यू विल परसीव इट टू बी ऑफ अन इक्वल डिस्टेंस अगेन एक लाइन ऐसे ड्रॉ है एक लाइन ऐसे ड्रॉ है दोनों की लेंथ एक्जैक्टली सेम है बट ऊपर वाली लाइन को यू विल परसीव इट टू बी बेसिकली लॉन्गर ऐसा नहीं है and there is the five apparent movement illusion also there is the five phenomenon when we see mo moving pictures in a cinema show we are influenced by this kind of illusion flickering of electrical lights to generate this illusion this phenomenon can be experimentally started with the help of an instrument presenting two or more lights in succession as i said if you present something um, fast enough <sighs> then you can uh, basically view it as a video okay <laughs> so um, एक्चुअली आई थिंक आई कंफ्यूज दिस मोशन पैरालैक्स मोशन पैरालैक्स मैं आपको एक बार फिर से समझा देती हूँ काइनेटिक मोलिकुलर क्यू एंड हेंस नॉट कंसिडर पिक्टोरियल क्यू इट हर्स एन ऑब्जेक्ट एट डिफरेंट डिस्टेंसेस यू मूव एट डिफरेंट रिलेटिव स्पीड हाँ सो दिस वॉज अ डिफरेंट थिंग आउट देर तो ये मूवीज में भी होता है यू कैन सी इट्स एप्लीकेशन इन वीडियोज बट द रियल कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ इट इज दैट द रेट ऑफ एन ऑब्जेक्ट ऑब्जेक्ट मूवमेंट प्रोवाइड्स क्यू टू इट्स डिस्टेंस जैसे कि आप छोटा बड़ा देख के बता सकते हो ऑब्जेक्ट इज हियर और देर मूवमेंट देख के भी यू कैन टेल सो क्लोजर ऑब्जेक्ट मूव अगेंस्ट द डायरेक्शन एंड फादर ऑब्जेक्ट मूव विद द डायरेक्शन दैट इज मोशन पैरलैक्स सो सॉरी आई एक्चुअली एक्सप्लेन इट एज अ नॉर्मल वीडियो बट आई डेंट रियलाइज दट आई डेंट गेट इन टू द डेप्थ ऑफ इट तो फास्ट इनफ इफ यू आर प्रेजेंटिंग इट्स अ वीडियो बट वीडियो में भी अगर कोई चीज दूर से दूर में कभी इट इज अपेयर टू बी फार्दर देन इट विल बी सॉर्ट ऑफ मूविंग विद एंड इफ इट इज really close then it will be against so uh, of course as we have discussed before social cultural influences bhi hote hain perception pe as we were saying that uh, you know this uh, is discussing the example of makeup discussing the example of certain kind of bags or uh, faces also so one of the major examples of socio cultural perspective is that human beings as a species is able to recognize faces faster than it is able to recognize any other object visually so um, basically habits of perception are learned differently in different cultural settings so uh, what your culture is predisposing you to for example uh, i think i've discussed this before there's this aboriginal tribe uh, jin ke liye uh, rectangles are more easily recognizable than urban people so um, their culture exposes them to this kind of thing that's why their perception might be different so i hope i've cleared all your doubts uh, from this chapter if you have any questions please please feel free to leave them in the comment box and do subscribe to the channel thank you for listening to me uh -huh.